We had a client come in today who had complaints of some anterior knee pain and some on and off hip pain on one particular leg, which pretty much occurred with activity. So he was fine day to day, and so there wasn't a real complaint of issues, but it is hampering his physical activity. So by looking at the gait pattern on the strideway, it gave us an opportunity to see where the asymmetries were. And once we identified those asymmetries, we then look for an intervention, whatever that may be, and um, to identify whether or not the intervention that we selected would have any type of a difference at all. The left leg is, was the longer leg when we measured the leg length, and so now we just have him doing a figure four stretch to stretch that left hip out a bit and see if that would be enough to, to uh, change the functional leg length. So here you can see the pre-assessment and then post-treatment. So here we can look at the curves. Green is uh, our left foot, red is our right. And one of the first things we can notice in the, in the data here is um, basically a, a, a shift in the uh, timing of the peaks. Okay, So we can see some ampl amplitude differences, but you can see how far apart the curves are from each other. Uh, and that, that's, that can show some of the asymmetries that we're having. And one of the things that we can see in the changes here is we can see the curves kind of following each other a lot more, especially at the timing of the peaks as we go through the gait curves. So, well, Margie, you can uh, vouch for this as well. And uh, the fact that uh, I think any little changes you make, you're going to see changes in the curve patterns. It won't be perfect right off the bat, but there's some adaptations that, that come with, the, um, with the, uh, the changes that are occurring to the body. Yeah, and I think the adaptations are subtle enough that you may not be able to see them with your naked eye. And so having the curves like this to be able to identify uh, the shifts in the pattern is, uh, is really important. Even something on this one where um, it is not at the same peak as the other one, but, uh, but the timing of the peak is, is improved. And that was just with a short intervention. So find these incredibly helpful to be able to confirm that you've made a change in someone's movement pattern and in their overall motor control system. We were able to do an intervention, we found an intervention that created a change, so then therefore it gave us confidence to be able to continue on with that intervention and perhaps expand it ar around um, the focus of that intervention to try to have the final outcome or resolution of pain with activity. This is this could obviously be done clinically, but since we have the objective data and it gives us a, a much quicker identification that we're on track, that we would waste a lot less time, be far more efficient use of uh, patient visits, 
patient time, patient co-pays, um, everything that goes into that, um, and try to get resolution and improved uh, functional outcome and functional performance. So the data from the Strideway system gives you objective information to be able to identify that whatever intervention you may have just tried, whether or not it has had a positive effect. But even before that, the information from the Strideway system can demonstrate the asymmetries and so that you're able to identify if there is a problem that, that exists that you may not have been able to see just by using the naked eye.